Tonight we look at a local community organization, Almost Home Forever, that helps Front Street Animal Shelter find homes for some of the more difficult to place dogs. These are unique dogs. They may have a treatable health condition, or maybe they're missing an eye, or maybe some fur. But underneath that less than perfect exterior is a dog longing to find a forever home. Operating on a shoestring budget and lots of love, Almost Home Forever is a small, homegrown rescue group based in the Del Paso Heights area of Sacramento. I'm Don Henkel, and this is Shelter Life. Hi everybody, joining me tonight is an animal advocate, an animal lover, and a compassionate, loving individual, and somebody that I get to call friend. Please welcome Robin Laura. Robin, how long have you been involved in animal advocacy? Oh my gosh, probably my whole life. When I was in the seventh grade, I took posters to my elementary school about the baby harp seals. So it's been pretty much my whole life. So you have this great little grassroots organized rescue called Almost Home Forever. Yes. Tell us what made you do this rescue. Well, I've been working with a, a rescue out of the Bay Area for about nine years, and they decided they were going to take a time out. And that's when I kind of panicked because I realized I couldn't continue to do what I was doing unless I was attached to a nonprofit organization. And I thought, you know what? Now's as good a time as any. I was, I'd always planned on starting up my own nonprofit, but it just came a few years sooner than I had anticipated. So Almost Home Forever is obviously at your house. Yes, we're foster based. And and you do a lot of partnership and collaboration with Front Street. Yes. How did that all come to be? Um, that came about when I was working with the previous rescue. Um, we would, dogs literally from the neighborhood that I live in are abandoned all the time and on the streets. So I'd bring them into the shelter. I would implore at reception that please attach the rescue's name. If there's you know any problems, we'll find a way to figure out how to pull the animals and, and foster them if need be. And so it kind of started like that. And then when I started my own rescue, um, I got to know the people better at the shelter and just really wanted to form a relationship and become part of the Front Street family. So what makes your rescue different from some of the other larger rescues in town? Um, I really have a soft spot for going for animals that are harder to adopt, um, that might take longer. You might have to have them for a few months instead of a few weeks. Uh, they might have behavior issues or medical issues, or they could just be a misunderstood breed. So you have Jack. Yes. Right. Texas Jack. Texas Jack here happens to be a foster through Front Street. I typically have one foster with my rescue as well as one with Front Street because I kind of feel like I'm cheating on Front Street if I don't. <laughs> and um, he came to me because one of the dog handlers said, you know what, this dog needs, needs a special some special attention if we get him into a foster home we know he's going to do great i've only had him a week and after 24 hours i couldn't believe the difference so it's amazing you know we've we've done shows on on the foster programs at, at front street in the past and i can tell you that you you, you just you're, you're solidifying what we hear so much is yes. that you get a dog out of a shelter environment and you give them that one-on-one -on -one love and they really truly become their their true personality comes out Let's absolutely absolutely so, Jack, Jack's missing one eye, right? Jack is missing an eye. We're not quite sure what happened. Um, although it's been at least a year since that eye's been missing. Since he's been with me, I haven't noticed anything about him where he would act the least bit disabled because he's missing his eye. He's got great hearing. He's got a little bit wobbly back end, 
But that just makes it all the more fun to watch him when he runs after his toys. <laughs> so do you think um, you'll have trouble getting Jack adopted? As a matter of fact, I got an email today. I spoke with uh, a gentleman on the phone right before coming down to do the show. And we're meeting up on Friday, and I am positive that it's going to be a good match. For those of you that don't know, um, you know, Robin does a lot of wonderful things with her shelter. And she had this little guy that I'm happy to say has been adopted. But there was this little dog named Sonny. And Sonny just had my heart because he was a special needs dog, similar to Texas Jack here. Sonny was cute as could be, full of rambunctions, but he had a skin disorder. So the whole back of his of his his back was it was just it was skin. There was no fur there, and he was just the cutest thing in the world. And I'm so glad that he was adopted. Yes. I mean, I would I would have loved to have him on the show. Don't get me wrong, but yes. ultimately we want these dogs to be adopted and find their forever homes. Yes. So that was great, and I'm sure that Texas Jack is going to be just as lucky. Absolutely, and it's funny because the dog that you're talking about, we were about to go on a road trip and take him to, to some friends of mine that have a rescue in Seattle because we just weren't getting any interest in him here. And I'd had him since February and I knew he needed his own home. And as soon as we made the plans, in came the emails. Yeah. So he, he got adopted out locally and I get to see him and I get to get regular updates, so that's really nice. That's cool. Jack is a foster from Front Street, right? Yes. So if you find a home for them, does he then go, was he adopted through your rescue or is he adopted out through Front Street? No, he's adopted out through Front Street. Okay. Um, this particular guy is gonna be meeting up, he's gonna have a meet and greet at the Adoption Center at Petco. Which is wonderful. Absolutely amazing, yes it is, yes it is. It's done so much so much for getting these animals adopted out. But yes, he definitely will be a Front Street adoption dog. So you live in Del Paso Heights. Yes. And it's, it's common that that's a little bit rougher area. Yes. And one of the things you told me earlier was that, you know, your rescue being that it's in Del Paso Heights, you are definitely faced with a lot more probably than a typical rescue would be. Can you tell me what your rescue has now become for that area? I mean, are people coming Certainly. to you for advice? And I have a lot of people through word of mouth in the neighborhood that have animals that are injured, sick, and they don't have the means to pay for veterinary care. And there'll be somebody in the neighborhood that'll say, hey, I know this lady, she lives over here, let me talk to her, maybe she can help. And so even though it's not yet in our mission statement, I think I'm going to have to revise our mission statement because initially the mission statement was all about just helping these animals, getting them into permanent loving homes. But I'm also realizing a lot of these people would have to give up their animals that they love that are already in a loving home because they can't care for their medical needs. So the rescue has expanded to applying for grants that allow us to help keep these animals in their homes and get the veterinary care that they need. I think that um, what you're doing is wonderful. Thank you. And it's, it's very compassionate and obviously you love animals. I do. And I think that what you're doing is you're actually offering a service for that particular area um, that may have been lacking a little bit. Yes. And you know, you know there's no, there's no um, it's, it's very well known that you know veterinary care is not cheap right um, and and people definitely um, will definitely chip in and help and hopefully people will be able to go to your Facebook page or your website and maybe learn a little bit more about exactly what your organization right. does and you know maybe they'll be able to you know help or volunteer or come up with other needs that might be able to assist absolutely. you absolutely you know I, I wonder what the people in Del Paso Heights think of you as an individual I mean are you known? Do people like say hi, Robin, when you're walking down the street? I mean, not quite known like that, even though I've lived in the neighborhood for almost 15 years. Um, it's more people, just people in the neighborhood that have animals that I've helped. They will mention to other people um, and people where I've picked up their dogs off the street taken them to Front Street, and they've actually gotten reunited. Great. They remember that, and they, they will come to me if they have questions about health care for their pets. 
So you recently just went to a really big seminar, didn't you? I did. So I have no idea what it was. I saw your little post on Facebook. What was that about and why did you go? It's the Best Friends National Annual um, Conference. Best Friends, I believe, is the largest animal sanctuary in the United States. They're located in Utah. Okay. And this is the third conference I've been to. They offer such a wide variety of information um, and presentations that no matter what area you're interested in, you can find presentations that are going to just dial right in to your needs. And it's kind of funny because, as a matter of fact, when the first one I went to in Las Vegas three years ago, that's when I met Sherry Crum and Gina Nepp. They sat right down next to me at a table in a room full of 1,700 people. So I thought that was kind of fate. amazing. Was that fate? Yes. Was that fate? I would say that's fate. I think fate. so. I would say that's fate. I think so. And you've been collaborating with Front Street ever since? Yes. Yeah. I yes. mean, you're a volunteer at Front Street as well. I've seen you. you yes. Know? One of the things that I really um, admire about you is you will show a dog any opportunity that's available. Absolutely. That's the only way they're going to get adopted. And um, we've got a clip of um, you showing a dog at a sacrament. It's called MOFO. It's a mobile food truck event where Front Street actually runs the beer garden. But it's just a little clip of actually you showing some of the dogs there. So let's have a quick look at that and then we'll come back and talk about it. Hey everybody, I'm Don with Shelter Life and we're at the Sacramento MOFO event here at McKinley Park with Robin Laura for Forever Home. So Robin, it's been a while since we talked last. Yes. And tell us about why this event is so special for you. Well, this event has gotten a few of my dogs adopted out in the past. Um, it also gives them a lot of uh, exposure, socialization in ways that they wouldn't normally get at the average foster home. Right. So this really gets them out and about and we can better judge what the perfect family would be for them. Because they're out of the kennel environment and they're in a right. more open space. Exactly. exactly. And who, who do we have here? We have Major. Major. Major came from um, a high kill um, municipal shelter in Stanislaus County. And he's about seven years old. He's good with other dogs. He's iffy with cats because he really wants to chase them. Yeah, well, so, that's okay. That's okay. He likes to chase the tail, probably. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So since we talked last, how has the rescue been doing? We've been doing really good. Um, we've gotten more foster families, which has made a huge difference. So we've been able to pull more dogs from from the shelters, and we've been able to respond to Front Street when they've got a dog with some special needs. We've had some space for them. So how is the placement going? Are you placing most of them? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, we only have one long-term um, special needs guy, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> we were working on medical issues with him. We've finally gotten that to the point where everything is cleared up. Um, and so he's going to be up for adoption soon. Robin, do you find yourself taking more of the, I don't want to say challenging dogs, but do you have a bigger heart for some of the ones that are a little bit more challenging to get adopted? We do. We like to go for the ones that might otherwise be overlooked. Uh, we figure they deserve a chance just like the cute little puppy deserves well, it's a kind of, chance. Well, this is like a dead ringer for one-eyed Texas Jack. Yes. It's like his brother, <laughs> but this one must have had a, has both eyes, which is great. He does. He does have an issue with his one eye, so he's going to require drops in ointment twice a day, probably for the rest of his life. And for those of you that don't know, um, in the studio when we were talking to Robin, she had one-eyed Texas Jack, and, and he was adopted shortly thereafter, yes. was he not? Yes, he was. Have you been able to stay in contact with his adopter? As a matter of fact, his adopter took him on as um, a recuperation from his eye surgery. They had already adopted Sammy from me, and they said, oh, we'll foster him for you. Yeah. Well, they adopted him, too. They I just couldn't Sammy. part with him. I remember Sammy big time. Yeah. I think everybody loves Sammy. Sammy is great. So I get updates from them all the time. I can go see him whenever I want. That's it's great. fantastic. That's great. So you have some people with you tonight. Yes. Um, you have some helpers that are bringing their fosters as well. Yes. So um, hopefully we'll be able to talk to them in a little bit. Yeah, that'd be but great. What else would you like to tell us about events like this and the other events that you do to help get these guys adopted? You were telling me prior 
about some really exciting things coming up for Almost Forever Home. Yes, and we we have um, the ASPCA is putting on an event April 26th at the state capitol and they've invited all the rescues and shelters. Um, so we're going to be there with all of our kids, whoever we have. Um, we've also got some some interesting things coming up on board. Um, a friend, Kara Kenzel, is she pulls from High Kill Shelters for German Shepherd and other rescues. Oh, uh, German Shepherd's my breed. Yeah, and she she's founded. Um, underdog railroad and she's trying to get some momentum to get these guys transported through air through through you know cars right. through whatever it takes to get them to the shelters and the rescues in other states that honestly are running out of dogs right that it amazes me that there are states that are running out of adoptable dogs i really can't wait until we're one of those states but i think we got a ways to go I think we have a ways to go, but prove, improvement is happening. Which yes, is it a good is. Thing. It's yes, a good it thing. is. So anyway, everybody, we're going to basically be following Robin and her friends around to actually show you exactly what they do at events like this to really get these guys not only socialized, but to hopefully meet their forever homes. So we're going to be back in just one second and talk to one of Laura, Laura's fosters as well. We'll be right back. Thank you. Hey everybody, we're talking with Shannon now, who's actually one of the fosters for Almost Home Forever. Shannon, how did you become involved with this underdog rescue? Oh, well, I met Robin through Front Street. Um, I was fostering a dog named Wyatt with uh, Front Street, okay. and she helped me out with him, um, taking him to different events, so that's how I met her. And then um, she contacted me when they needed um, a foster home for this little man, Raider. Raider. Um, and so then I took him on. And then I just, that's how I became more involved with Almost Home Forever and Robin. Um, and now I'm also participating by being a, a board member. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's really nice to see um, an organization, a rescue, purely born out of love. Yes, I agree. Um, and to watch it grow and blossom. I remember when I was talking to Robin about coming here and doing this, she says, well, I've got fosters that can come as well. And she goes, Don, it's not the same. It's grown so much in the past few months, right. which is great. So if there was anything you would like to tell the general public out there um, about fostering or about Almost Home Forever, what would it be? Um, it's a great, like you said, it's an organization with people who truly love animals and love what they do. I've uh, never been surrounded by such a caring group of people who really want to make sure 
that these animals find good homes, good, caring, loving homes. Um, and so that's probably the biggest message I want to right. say. And um, you can find us at Almost Home Forever on Facebook. Great. And we have a website coming soon. Great. Shannon, thank you so much. We're going to be following you. you. And is it Raider? Raider. We're going to be following you and Raider around as well. And <laughs> hopefully uh, the music is okay, buddy. Yeah. You'll be all right. And thank you again. Thank you so much. You bet. So everybody, this is what it's all about. It's about the collaborations that Front Street has developed throughout the years. It's about these great organizations and rescues who actually take these fosters in to help find forever homes, and especially the ones who might have a little bit more time finding a good forever home. So sit back and relax, watch exactly what Shannon and Robin do at events like SAC MOFO. And once again, thanks for your support of Shelter Life. You have a sense of pride and you beam and you're not afraid to talk to anybody. It's kind of funny because I'm actually shy. You wouldn't know that. But when I'm speaking for an animal, I have no problem putting on my game face. And it's not even really putting on a show. It's I genuinely want to get these guys adopted out because the sooner I can get this guy adopted, the sooner I can get another one in and get that one out and it opens up room for more and more and more to find homes. Right. So when I think of it in terms of I'm speaking on behalf of the animals, that shyness goes away. And I think that's a really good way to phrase that because you are. You're speaking on behalf of them because they can't yes. technically speak human. Right. Right. I mean, they definitely have their own language. And I, I really respect the fact that you will actually take the dogs that need a little bit more TLC. You know, the ones that people will walk by yes. at the shelter and not give a second look. And you're like, no, no, no. Because despite the fact that he maybe he's missing an eye, that is a loving dog there that's yes. just really wanting to give his love to a family. Absolutely. And I think that's one of those things that it takes a special person to foster or for your instance, to actually run a shelter. I mean, almost home forever. What a perfect name because they're almost there. Yes, they're almost that's how there. I feel. And I think it's a great organization. I think you're doing a phenomenal job, but there's got to be some challenges, right? I mean, it's not all, it's not all sugar and spice and everything nice. No, There's it's definitely got to be some challenges. Why don't you talk about maybe some of the, the challenges that you go through on maybe even a daily basis with the rescue and how you overcome those and rise above that? Uh, well, like I said, in my neighborhood, there's a lot of abandoned animals. So just the other day, we ended up taking three animals down to the shelter, hoping that they will be reunited with their families. And I thought, wow, in one day, and I was on my way to uh, an event for Front Street when I had to say, you know what, I'm running late because there's two Huskies tethered together running down Marysville Boulevard. And I got to get them out of, the, out of the street. And then there was a little Chihuahua that morning as well. So those things are pretty challenging. Um, I work full time away from home. Okay. So that's a little challenging too. Um, I'm strategic with dog doors and dog runs <laughs> and baby gates and uh, the help of neighbors. Um, so, so that makes a big difference. And sometimes I get a little overwhelmed if there's an emergency and there's a bunch that come in at once, but I just think, you know, this is temporary. Yeah. This is temporary. You can get through it you can get the support you need and it's just another day so if you had a wish list and i'm sure you do <laughs> and it might be on your webpage for that matter um but what's one of the things that you really would like to put out there let the public know that this is something we really need i kind of caught the phrase of it a little bit earlier the more dogs in foster the more that will be adopted the more that yes. we can actually go back into foster and move forward Talk to us about what a foster would be for Almost Home Forever. That's, that's a, a big challenge I'm having right now is, is recruiting foster families because we're such a new rescue and it's not something that I'm familiar with. I don't really know how to go about doing it other than just word of mouth. Um, but it's so rewarding to have these animals in your home temporarily, see how they change and they just they just come alive. And then getting to play a role in 
seeing them in their new home and seeing how happy they are, that just, that just makes me so happy and it makes me know that I'm doing the right thing. Robin, your, your heart is so solid and so, so firm on this. Um, you know, we're almost out of time and, and, and I could talk to you more and more about this because you are a very giving person. Um, you know, you have a Facebook page, right? Yes, Almost Home Forever. So everybody, check out the Facebook page for Almost Home Forever to get a little more information on Robin and her rescue. And you might be able to see if there's something you can do to help. Got to say thank you to the volunteers at Front Street and the volunteers here at Access Sacramento who helped make this show possible. My incredibly great, talented crew from Shelter Life, you guys are the best. Come and visit us at Front Street, 2127 Front Street, or better yet, check out the Adoption Annex at the Petco across the street from Arden Fair Mall. Until next time, everybody, I'm Don Hankel, and we'll see you again on Shelter Life. Hi, my name is Gina Knapp, and I manage the Front Street Animal Shelter for the city of Sacramento. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Shelter Life. As you've seen, our staff and volunteers work incredibly hard to make a difference for the animals in our community. We focus continuously on seeking new and creative ways to save lives. We know that with the support of people just like you, we can make Sacramento a safe haven for the animals that end up in our shelter. We also strive to be innovative, looking for ways to keep pets out of the shelter to begin with. Working together with that mission in mind, great things are possible. Thank you for joining us on this journey.